All right, ladies and gentlemen, what is up? Darkside Phil here. Welcome to my final day of E3 coverage. Um, today, the two major press conferences are Ubisoft, which we're going to talk about right now, and then later tonight is Sony, and I'll be covering that one as well. Um, tomorrow is Nintendo, but Nintendo isn't doing a formal conference. Instead, they're just going to do one of their like 30-minute long informative videos. So I'm probably not going to do a video like this for Nintendo. Instead, I'll talk about them later this week on my podcast. In fact, later this week on the podcast, I'll be kind of doing a recap of all the E3 happenings and let everyone know what I think the big announcements were and the best and worst and all kinds of stuff like that. So you'll definitely want to check that out later this week, okay? <clears throat> but for now, I just finished watching the Ubisoft press conference for E3 2017. And I want to recap it with you like usual. And I want to... Let you know what I thought was good, what was bad, give you my reactions. It was a pretty interesting press conference this year. Just to start, all right, um, there was no Aisha Tyler as the host of Ubisoft this year. Now, she's been the host on and off for the past five plus years at, at E3. So, everyone always wonders, will she be the host or not? No, this year she was not. They opted to pretty much just go with having the game devs who are in charge of the various projects introduce their own projects. So... No overbearing comedy or anything like that. Although, honestly, Aisha Tyler never really bothered me. But it's important to know, no Aisha Tyler this year. Okay? Alright, so. The show opened with the new Raving Rabbids crossover game with Mario. If you're not aware, this leaked last month because someone found a promotional piece of artwork for it. It's called Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Now, the promotional artwork for this game showed Mario and the, the Mario Land or Mario World characters holding guns and also showed the rabbits holding guns. So when everyone saw this artwork, they thought, wow, it's going to be like a team-based shooter. Maybe it'll be like, like Splatoon or something like that. They'll be running around shooting each other or whatever. And boy, were we surprised when they presented this game. Complete polar opposite of what we all were thinking. It's not active action-based at all. It's actually a turn-based game, okay? So as they start to present this game, they actually call out... Well, first of all, it was, what was his name? Eve Guillermo or whatever he is, the, the head of Ubisoft, came out. He announced the game, and then he called out Miyamoto. Yes, Miyamoto-san from Nintendo came out. And they had replica guns from the game. They were posing on stage with them and everything. Um, and then they started ru running uh, footage of the game. It is going to be a Nintendo Switch, Switch exclusive. Okay? It's not going to be on any console but the Nintendo Switch. <clears throat> So, what is this game? It is a turn-based strategy game. Think XCOM, think uh, Disgaea, or think Final Fantasy Tactics. That's pretty much what this game is. The only difference is it's cover-based. So, uh, like XCOM, you have to get behind cover, and then during your turn, peek out and shoot. You can do combo attacks. They were showing that each character has unique abilities, like Mario has an ability that every time an enemy attacks, he can immediately counterattack. So they're showing all these things. They're showing this cool uh, thing where you can do combo shots that make the enemies bounce up to higher levels to make them more vulnerable and stuff. <clears throat> so it looked pretty good. It actually did. It looked like a unique concept. Something that no one was expecting because we were all expecting, honestly, a shooter game and a real-time strategy Mario Rabbids game is just like, <clears throat> seriously, so different. You know, now who knows? The thing is, typically these Mario games are made for a younger audience, so they're not incredibly challenging. But real-time strategy games, just by definition, are some of the most challenging video games out there. So the question remains, will this game be like a dumbed-down version of an RTS, or is it actually going to be like really challenging? So I don't know. I mean, it was really just kind of shocking, because when you saw this, you're like, wow, this is not what whatsoever, nothing that we were expecting from a game like this, and certainly we weren't expecting Miyamoto to be so proud of the project that he came out and helped present it and everything, so I'm interested, and it actually has a release date of August 29th, okay, so yeah, it's actually the end of the summer, <clears throat> it's coming out in just about two months, so that's pretty cool, right, um, okay, then they moved on to Assassin's Creed Origins, and they showed some Big cinematic trailer pieces, basically showing there's going to be all kinds of animals, like lions and stuff in it, and there's going to be combat. But they didn't really show any gameplay. Um, they actually said, oh, after the press conference, we're going to show you gameplay, which makes no sense. This is the press conference, and now is the time to show off your game, right? Incidentally, I did watch about five minutes of gameplay after the press conference. Quite honestly, it looks like typical Assassin's Creed fare. The only difference now is that you can control an eagle, 
and there may be a few other nuances like your weapons the combat's a little bit different there's an active dodge system and the weapons level up and stuff like that so it's basically assassin's creed with some minor additions and tweaks um is it revolutionizing the entire franchise no it's not but do we need it to revolutionize not really what we need is a solid entry in the series um that basically delivers rather than underwhelms and keep in mind we didn't get an assassin's creed game last year so maybe this is the one you know what i mean like finally because we didn't get overloaded on assassin's creed maybe this one will be a great installment <clears throat> so we'll see we'll see how it goes um but it looks good to me it looks solid and you know I'm, i am excited for assassin's creed origins um and that by the way it is coming out on october 27th october 27th is the release date for that one okay up next so, they start showing a game where a guy's working on a car, and then he's driving the car. And immediately you think, well, what's the Ubisoft franchise of driving? Oh, the crew, right? So maybe they're bringing back the crew. But then, he's not driving a car anymore. Now he's driving some other unique kind of land vehicles. Now, all of a sudden, he's driving a boat. Wait a minute, now he's flying a plane. And you're like, what the hell? Maybe this isn't the crew. But no, it is. It was the crew, too. But they've dramatically expanded what the crew is going to be. They've now made it a wide variety of vehicles that you can drive in this game. To which, I'm, I'll be honest with everyone, okay? Typically for me, these racing games are like non-entities, alright? And what I mean by that is, I don't get super excited over racing sims or anything. Forza, Gran Turismo, you don't hear me flipping out about it or that I'm so excited that I need to play racing games. For me, I'm not. I'm really not a car guy. I'm not. I'm more of like, every once in a while I'll play a racing game as like variety, but I'm not a guy that's like, oh, I'm, I'm just jizzing in my pants because they got the new model. For example, yesterday at Microsoft's press conference, Forza 7, here's the new Porsche that no one's ever seen before, real car on stage. I didn't erupt with a giant boner because it was a fucking Porsche on stage. Um, <clears throat> same thing here, like, you would think that a game like The Crew 2, eh, I wouldn't care, but actually watching the way that the game was presented, showing that there's a variety of vehicles that you can go between, that actually got my interest. A game where you can basically, it's more about driving anything, actually is fun to me. Like, that is a hook that I think could sell this game compared to other racing sims out there that are just driving a fucking car. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so pretty interesting um i and i am i'm not i don't know i'm not saying by no means am i saying i'm definitely going to get the crew too but i am interested in it like it piqued my interest more than say any other racing game that i've seen in recent memory because of that variety of stuff okay okay and they, they did announce that game's coming out early 2018 all right so early 2018 the crew too we'll have to see um south park the fractured butthole they ran a trailer for it. There's some funny stuff in there. Now, you know, getting a little bit more of the humor. One of, one of the, the girls from the show. I forget her. I keep forgetting her name. It's the girl that, that what's his name, likes. Uh, Stan. But, um, I always forget her name. Uh, but she, now she's Call Girl. She's a superhero called Call Girl, which is actually funny, obviously. It has to do with, you know, adult humor, inside joke. So, I like that. And, you know, they didn't show anything new. But we've seen the fractured butthole for like three freaking years now. So, I don't think we needed to see anything new. Um, and the game's coming out October 17th. So, great. South Park, the fractured butthole. Can't wait for it. Thumbs up. Uh, Wendy. That's everyone's going crazy in the stream chat. Wendy. It's Wendy. It's Wendy. It was Wendy. Okay. Um, okay. Then, they presented a new game with Elijah Wood, the actor, uh, in it. And it was really weird because you couldn't really tell what it was. They didn't actually show any gameplay. But the premise of the game is that they found a way to transfer, like, the human existence or human, um, not really intelligence, but maybe, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, whatever you want to call it, your soul or whatever. They found a way to transfer it into virtual reality. And apparently the premise of the game is that there's people experiencing, like, other people's lives through virtual reality. And the name of the game is called Transference, or Transference, excuse me. But... It didn't really show any gameplay. It was just like a cinematic kind of trailer exp explaining the premise, but didn't actually tell you. Will, will this actually be a VR game? I have to assume probably yes. But they didn't even say what platform. Is it going to be on PSVR or the Vive or Oculus? They didn't explain any of that really at all. So I honestly have absolutely no idea what to expect with this game. And that game is supposedly going to be coming out in spring of 2018. I guess we'll have to see if we get any more information on that game. Okay, 
The next game, I think, kind of surprised everyone, all right? It start, starts showing ships, pirate ships, going across water, and immediately everyone's going, it's Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. Maybe they made a sequel to it, so there's two Assassin's Creed games coming out this year or something. Uh, but as we watch it more and more, you come to realize, no, actually, it's not that. It's actual, just seems to be like the pirate-style gameplay from Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag. So they show ships are fighting and shooting cannonballs back and forth and harpoons back and forth at each other just like you did in that game and then they show that you can board the ships although although they did not show any hand-to-hand -hand combat which makes me wonder if they, there's no hand-to-hand -hand combat in this game is it just like kind of a naval simulator and it doesn't have that aspect i don't know um they did say that it is they, there will be a five versus five team-based pvp mode which led everyone to kind of believe that maybe this game is going to be an online-only multiplayer game and ha not have a single-player campaign, but that was never said during this, this you know, trailer or presentation, so don't take it as that, but it could be. That's kind of the possibility. It might just be an online-only multiplayer game. We're not sure yet. Um, the graphics were great. The ships looked really detailed and amazing. The sails were flapping realistically with the air and the wind. It looked pretty cool. Um, and then they said at the very end of it, the world will evolve with what you do. And you're like, what the hell is he talking about? And then they go to a quick, another quick cinematic scene where a Kraken comes up and grabs a ship and everyone's like, holy shit. So apparently not only is it going to have this combat against human controlled ships, but also there's going to be other entities that you're going to be fighting like the Kraken and stuff like that. Maybe it'd be a boss fight against the Kraken or something like that. Um, so it sounds pretty good. Looks pretty good. The name of the game is Skull and Crossbones, um, and I'm going to be honest with everyone. Yesterday, I talked about Sea of Thieves, right? I said Sea of Thieves looks like the kind of game that if you have a bunch of friends and you're playing together, it'll be fun as like a cooperative game similar to, say, Destiny or any of these other Ubisoft cooperative shooters that have been coming out in recent years. But it doesn't look to me like a game that is going to hook you on the gameplay alone. It has to be more about the social experience. This game, Skull and Crossbones, that gameplay looked good. So that this game, and I, I was actually kind of saying in the stream chat, well, you know, too bad for Sea of Thieves because if these games go head-to-head -head up against each other, I would play Skull and Crossbones way before I would play Sea of Thieves. It just looks like a much better game. But it's really going to depend on when these games come out. Um, this one in particular, they said, is going to be fall 2018. What does that mean? Who knows? It's not a set release date. But now we know it's at least uh, over a year away before we're even going to see Skull and Crossbones. So maybe if Sea of Thieves comes out before then, it'll be okay. But this game just looks better to me than Sea of Thieves. In the, just in the gameplay mechanics alone, it looks like a superior game. <clears throat> okay. So then, we knew this was coming, ladies and gentlemen. We knew this. We knew this was coming. Um... Fucking guys come out and start dancing. I swear to God, they look like they're wearing like cheesy Sub-Zero outfits from Mortal Kombat. And they're fucking dancing and shit. We're like, oh God, we know what this is. Then girls come out. The girlies are coming out and they're dancing. And then another girl comes out who I've never heard of before. Her name is Bebe Rexa. Okay. And she comes out. Oh, I'm singing. Fucking singing, singing. They're dancing and singing. Grace, graciously graciously this segment only lasted about five minutes it was pretty short because previous segments for just dance at ubisoft press conferences have lasted upwards of 10 to 15 minutes remember when what was it jason derulo or whoever the fuck that was like two or three years ago was there and he sung a whole song like two or three fucking songs and they had like 47 dancers on the fucking stage and you're like well time for me to go pop a fucking log because i don't want to watch this shit and i don't care um at least this time around it was short um so I don't know who the hell this girl was, but they say, oh, Just Dance is coming out, you know, soon in the fall 2018 and no one fucking cares. Again, I said this before and I'll say it again, much like the sports games that EA promotes during their press conference, literally not a single fucking person who buys Just Dance is watching E3 to hear about the next Just Dance. They don't give a fuck. If they're going to buy it, they're just going to buy it. They don't need to have an advertisement for it. So it's a complete waste of time to even advertise the game at the press conference. But they only did a very short presentation, so i got to actually say thumbs up to Ubisoft for actually fucking learning and saying, wow, let's make effective use of our time rather than waste everyone's time. So thumbs up. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. 
it is time to do a couple quick shout outs because I saw that we had a few things going on and then I'll continue on with the second half of my Ubisoft press conference reactions. Um, so first off, thank you to Krauxer who subscribed to the channel with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much, Krauxer. Um, thank you to Real Azuria who actually subscribed to the channel for the third month in a row. So welcome and thank you and enjoy your silver crown badge that you're now going to get in the stream chat. He says, uh, been with you since Fallout 3. Glad you're still going strong. So am I. Thank you for the support. Um, thanks to Keycon3 who did a 10-bit cheer. He said, Forza the crew and Need for Speed. Uh, not one of those looks bad to me. Yeah, I know we saw three different ga racing games so far at E3. I'm not saying that any of them looked bad. I'm just saying that the crew seems to stand out for me as the racing game of E3 because it had that variety in all these vehicles. It's more appealing to me than just driving a car, driving a car, driving a car. You know what I mean? Um... And shout out to Sonic Wii, who did a 10-bit cheer. He says, free cheers for a game that we didn't ask for, Just Dance. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone, for your support. Let's continue on with my reactions here. Okay. Um, get the stream chat back up. <clears throat> All right, so then you heard the familiar voice of one of the guys who works on South Park because he does the voices for South Park so you recognize his voice right away and they're showing a mobile phone and you're like, oh, what the hell? Yeah, a new South Park mobile game is coming out this year. It's called South Park Phone Destroyer and it seems like it's one of those collectible card games where you can get different versions of characters but they said basically it's everything pop culture related. Video games, uh, you know, fantasy realm, alien, sci-fi, you know what I mean? Like every realm of fantasy you could think of and you're going to get different versions of the characters from South Park dressed up like the like different characters from different genres and they're going to fight and stuff. Seems interesting. Um, actually, it actually reminds me of this game that I was playing a couple months ago called Animation Domination Throwdown. Um, it, what it did is it took all the popular Fox cartoons like Family Guy, King of the Hill, Bob's Burgers, Futurama, and it planted all of those franchises against each other in like a combat card game. Um, it seems like that's kind of what it's going to be, but at least with South Park, South Park graphics of the show are so simple, it would probably be pretty easy to make it as a mobile game, so that's going to be pretty cool that you're going to basically have South Park combat on your phone. Um, but of course, they didn't explain anything about you know, pricing or anything like that. I'm sure it's going to have microtransactions out the freaking ass that's going to make it make a $5 billion. Much like the Golden Boy guy that we had, uh, that we heard uh, on the EA press conference. I, I spent $1,000 on that mobile game, you know? <laughs> yeah, so who, who will be on, on uh, next year's E3, the Ubisoft press conference, announcing that they spent $1,000 on South Park uh, Phone Destroyer? Okay. So then they, oh, that's coming out 2017, but it didn't have a solid date. It just said 2017, okay? Uh, then they showed off this game called Starlight Battle for Atlas. And at first, it seemed like an interesting premise because it shows all of these, like, spaceships flying around and investigating alien worlds. And immediately, everyone is like, oh, my God, it's No Man's Sky 2. It's No Man's Sky all over again. Only then it shows there's an, an alien race called the Legion who you have to fight, and there's all this kind of interesting stuff. It already looks better than No Man's Sky. So everyone's like, wow, this game looks pretty good. And then all of a sudden, okay, then all of a sudden, they show a toy. And first they show the Nintendo Switch. Oh, the game's on the Switch, okay. Then they show a toy, and this guy is like assembling to pieces onto a, a spaceship toy, and he's got it on a controller. Now he's playing the game with a toy on his controller. And you're looking at it like, what the hell is this? Like, what uh, what am I watching right now? And sadly, as the, the trailer continues, the game basically degrades into, oh, this is a game where you have to constantly buy pieces in a store, physical toy pieces in a store, to build your spaceship. So it's like one of these nickel and dime games where you're going to spend 60 bucks up front just to get the fucking game and then they expect you to keep going back to the store and buying expansion pieces and everything. Um, or, or, you don't have to get the pieces in the store. The guy emphasized this. You could also get them digitally. Wow, so I can either buy physical toys at the store or I can go microtransactions out the ass to play your fucking game. I hate to say it, of all the games at the Ubisoft press conference, I give Starlight Battle for Atlas... Two thumbs down, 
just for the business model. It's garbage. You shouldn't have to buy a game and then buy more shit to play the fucking game. It's, you know, they're going the Skylanders route. They're going, you know, they're trying to get it like the other companies that have cashed in on this style of game. Ubisoft hasn't done that yet. And now they're trying to do it. I don't think it's going to work. I think the game's going to fail. It's, it looks like shit to me. It's just, it's fucking stupid. I hate that business model. <clears throat> um, and they announced that it's coming out, I think, next year. No, yeah, fall of 2018. That's coming out. Woohoo. Um, Steep. For those who don't know, Steep, that game, you know, that last year they uh, advertised the E3 and you never really heard about it again. Snowboarding game. Um, it's a very niche title, meaning it's only going to up appeal to a very small group of people who are into, like, winter sports. Is getting an expansion this December, December 5th. It's called Road to the Olympics. And they show this whole promo for it. I honestly don't really give a crap. Um... Who cares about Steep at this point, right? Like, I was something that I let, maybe I was interested. I maybe checked out last year. I never did, and now I don't care. Excuse me. Um, okay, so now we're nearing the end of the Ubisoft press conference. They left the two heavy hitters for last. The first one was Far Cry 5, which we all kind of saw the teaser for just a couple weeks ago. It's set in America, rural America, a small town that's been taken over by this cult, Okay. And so, similar to other Far Cry games, yes, you're going to be infiltrating bases, you're going to be infiltrating different areas that have been taken over by this cult and trying to take them out one by one. But the difference in this Far Cry is that now it's, number one, you actually get AI counterparts. There's a dog, and the dog's name is Boomer, and there's also other AI people you can recruit who could be like snipers or support classes, there's actually a guy that can come in with a plane, and they actually help you, and you can command them around to help you and do support as you infiltrate these bases. So that's a new one. Um... But also, they announced the game will be full co-op with friends. If you want to play the entire campaign cooperatively and have friends come in and be your co-op partners, you can also do that as well. So that looked pretty neat. The gameplay, it looked like Far Cry. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't it didn't really showcase anything that was like, oh my god, that's a first for Far Cry. No, it was more like typical Far Cry, just in a new setting. So I guess we'll see, you know, what actually happens, because we didn't really get much more information about the game. I know it has a release date, I think it's early 20, uh, 2018, excuse me, um, but more than likely, we're probably going to get more data on the game as we get closer to its release, okay? All right, ladies and gentlemen, now, to say that Bethesda, I said Bethesda, oops, to say that Ubisoft let the, left the best for last would be an understatement. Um, I'm about to announce something. If you didn't see this press conference, you're going to be shocked. I was fucking shocked to shit. I really was. Um, so here you go. Get ready. Okay. So they start playing a trailer. They're like, oh, a new IP or something. What is it? And it shows this pig-like humanoid sitting at a table. Very realistic graphics, by the way. Very detailed. Um, and on the other side of the table is a monkey-like human. So almost like mutants or aliens or something. And they're doing a deal for some kind of, like, little golden uh, trinket, probably a collectible, and it seems like the monkey was hired by this pig guy to get him this trinket. So the pig guy's picking it up, and all of a sudden, it starts melting. And he goes, huh? And the monkey goes, yeah, it's fucking chocolate for you, you fucking pig. And I'm, Whoa! Like, I wasn't expecting them to start dropping F-bombs in a game trailer, right? So he grabs his money for, the, for this, and he has a claw, a zip claw, I think, like, Bionic Commando, and he zips his way away, and he climbs up a building, and he jumps onto this, this aerial craft that's flying through this giant city, this futuristic city. And there's a, an, African, an African girl, I want to say that because I don't know if she's African American, but she was black. So, an African girl driving this vehicle, and he jumps on, and they're trying to escape. All of a sudden, the police show up. Now there's a big police chase, then they jump off their vehicle, they kick the police out of their own police vehicle, and they hightail it out of there. And by the way, the entire time, the monkey is literally going... Fuck a fuck a fuck and a fucking 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 fuck 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 fuck. I even wrote down fuck 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 the game because the guy says fuck probably about a dozen times at least during this trailer. So obviously I'm like, I see I had some feelings in the back of my head. I was like, what could this be? What could this game be? Because it's not gameplay. It's all just a trailer. And the first initial thought I had in my head when I saw a pig like humanoid, I thought maybe it's like Beyond Good and Evil Two. Because, you know, obviously one of the races in Beyond Good and Evil 1 was these pig-like creatures. But I'm thinking to myself, no, it can't be Beyond Good and Evil 2. Because number one, it's been almost 15 years since the first one came out. And number two, because they're saying fuck every five seconds. Like, the game was not a, a really, like, seriously adult-oriented game. So I was, like, totally thrown for a loop. <clears throat> so then, 
the monkey guy and this girl arrive back at home base, which is a bigger, you know, spacecraft out in space. And they walk up and basically, they I guess it wasn't a payment that he had really received. It was some kind of data. So they put this data card into the ship and a big map opens up, a galactic map of the galaxy. And it shows a girl. They don't really show the girl. They just show a close-up of her eyes and her eyes are green. Okay. And she says something about, you know, we're, the, the solution lies beyond. And then they just pan out and it says, Beyond Good and Evil 2. The fucking crowd went fucking ape shit. They went nuts. And who expected that? After 14 years of a franchise being completely dead, getting a sequel like that out of nowhere, seeing that they're actually treating it like a major AAA game with the amount of detail that they're going to put into these graphics and everything, and the fact that they're treating it with adult-oriented, you know, they're dropping F-bombs. I think what they've realized, <clears throat> honestly is that people who are fans of the original Beyond Good and Evil at this point have grown up, right? 14 fucking years. They're not kids anymore. So we have, like, nostalgic feelings for a game like that. And if you're going to make a sequel 14 years later, you've got to make it adult-oriented because we're all adults now, right? So I think that's what they did, is they realized they wanted to make an adult-oriented game. So then... Two presenters came out. For The first guy that comes out starts crying because the crowd reaction was so positive. And you can understand, when you have a, a game franchise that's dead for the greater part of, a, of more than a decade, and finally, uh, you know, a company gets enough confidence in the project to put the assets behind it to revive the series like that, and you get that massively positive reaction in E3, you're gonna get emotional. So I totally understood this guy's reaction as he walked out. And then they also had a... Uh, they also had a, a, a woman come out, complete SJW archetype, the big googly glasses, the short dyed haircut, you know what I mean, like everything. And of course, it's, oh, it's going to be a diversified cast of both animal hybrids and all kinds of races and creeds and everything. And I'm like, oh boy, well, now we know, we see where this is going, it's going to have that. Not to say that that's bad, but I certainly hope that they don't like go out of their way to be overbearing with the SJW shit during the course of this game. <clears throat> so they start talking about the game and they actually announce the game is actually a prequel all right now it's important to note because in the trailer i thought maybe that was jade the main character of beyond good and evil piloting the ship and they showed her green eyes but no maybe this is going to be like her, one of her you know predecessors to eventually you know through the law the genealogy you get to jade so apparently this is the backstory of how the universe populated with all these animal like hybrid creatures and everything and you know what? I'll be honest. I'll be honest here. I'm actually okay with that. Usually I'm not. Usually when you announce, oh, it's a prequel, I'll lose my shit. Because I hate prequels. Because prequels mean <clears throat> that you're going to know that certain things can't happen. For example, you're going to know that someone in the, the, the genealogy line of Jade has to survive because she gets born. It just It's just cause and effect, right? When you watch the fucking Star Wars prequels, you know that Anakin Skywalker ain't gonna fucking die because he becomes Darth Vader in the next trilogy. And it's kind of the same thing for prequels with games. I, I hate prequels because you kind of know certain things can't happen, all right? But for a game franchise that hasn't been around for 14 years, I think you have to realize that most people who end up playing Beyond Good and Evil 2 aren't even gonna know the plotline or remember the characters and the stories from the original Beyond Good and Evil anyway. So regardless of the fact that this is a prequel, I think it's okay. Enough time has passed that they're kind of starting fresh. They want to redesign this universe in a new and creative way so that maybe now they can continue the franchise on later. I'm okay with that. Um, I think it makes sense. <clears throat> so, then to end the press conference... They had literally all of their game developers come up on stage together as a group, like a group shot, and said, thank you for, you know, for watching our, our press conference. We really hope that you enjoyed it, and, you know, we'll see ya. And let me tell you, so far, I've seen EA, I've seen Microsoft, and I've seen Bethesda. By far, the Ubisoft press conference was the best one at E3. Now, there's one major one left, Sony, and Sony typically does a really good job. But Ubisoft this year... They hit it on all gears. What they basically did, they showed you every possible great game that they have in development, right? They gave you updates on games that were still in development. 
Uh, they didn't waste time on the bullshit you don't care about, like Just Dance. They did a really quick segment on that. And they gave a lot of time to this stuff that you'd be interested in, like, <coughs> excuse me, Far Cry 5 or uh, Beyond Good and Evil 2. That was a big bombshell announcement, right? So for me, this definitely is the best press conference so far of E3. Um, will Sony top it? I have no idea. I mean, right now, we know that there's a new God of War in development. That's a totally new style of game, and I get the feeling we're going to get more data, more information on that later today. Um, but outside of that, are there any big bombshells, you know what I mean, that Sony has in store for us? I don't know. I guess we're going to find out. But in my opinion, <clears throat> Ubisoft, great press conference, great announcements of, you know, just to go through. Uh, Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle, I'm going to be playing that. That looks good to me. Um, Assassin's Creed Origins looks solid. I'm going to be playing that. The Crew 2 I'm actually interested in when normally I wouldn't be. I'm actually interested in a driving game because it has such a wide variety of vehicles. South Park, The Fractured Butthole, of course I'm fucking playing that. Um, this Transference game, whatever it is, seems interesting. Skull and Bones looked interesting. Um, South Park Mobile I'm probably going to try out. I'm not going to spend $1,000 like Golden Boy, but I'm probably going to at least try the game out. Um... Far Cry 5 and Beyond Good and Evil 2, all great. The only things that didn't, I didn't like, Just Dance 2, Starlight, and Steep. But what was that in total? Five to ten minutes out of their entire press conference? So it didn't drag on and it didn't waste our time. I actually thought this press conference was well-paced, well-hosted, and it hit it on all cylinders. Ubisoft, two thumbs up from me this year, guys. You guys did a great job, and I hope that, uh, I hope that these games uh, end up being as good as at least they look when they were initially presented here at E3, okay? All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for my reactions and recap of the Ubisoft E3 2017 press conference. I hope that you enjoyed the uh, video. And one left, Sony. So I hope that you'll join me for that as well. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. Peace out, and I'll see you for the big conclusion coming up.